Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create bins using Microsoft Excel and I'm going to do this all by, uh, well, somewhat hand um, and not using the data analysis toolkit. Um, I have a separate video if you want to use that. This is the most flexible way. I have some data, as you can see, that was stored in column A, which had all kinds of values and I want to create, let's say, five bins. So. Um, that's the starting point and uh, then the first thing I need to do is actually determine the minimum and maximum now luckily Microsoft Excel has a min function so this is simply the minimum of column A and here is the maximum of column A so that we know what the lowest and the highest values were now depending on how we set up our bins um, yeah, either the minimum won't be included or the maximum so we need to adjust this minimum and maximum a little bit so like an offset if as you will um, so I decided on to set an adjustment uh, level and I'm just going to be using one now the bin width uh, is going to be fairly straightforward um, it's going to be the difference between these two uh, plus uh, one, uh, in this case the, for the adjustment, and then divide that over our number of bins. So that's exactly what this is doing. It's taking the difference of these two, the maximum minus the minimum, uh, adds the adjustment and then divides by the number of bins. Then we can actually create the bins depending on if you want to include the lower bound and exclude the upper bound or the other way around that you exclude the lower bound and include the upper bound. So I'm just having here that the first bin is going to be number one and then uh, this is just checking if I add one if it's not going to go over my number of bins. That way in the future I could drag down this whole second row without having to worry about adjusting things. Uh, the first value, um, if we have the lower bound included, can simply be the minimum. So that's simply a reference to that one. And then this is simply going to be then that lower bound plus the width of the uh, of the bins. The next one is then going to be if of course there is a bin there, then it will simply take the upper bound of the previous one, and then of course add again as long as this one is empty, add the width um, that was calculated. All right, and that's how you can actually continue for all of these. And in this case, I'm ending at five because I wanted five bins. If you want to exclude the lower bin, that means that we are actually adjusting the minimum then with one. Um, and then we simply add the, uh, the width again, and we keep doing that until we reach our last one. So very similar as the uh, previous version where we included the lower bound, uh, but now for excluding it and including the upper mount. All right, so then we can uh, write down nicely the labels for those bins if you want. Uh, they use straight brackets, I think they're called. I'm not really sure I'm not a native speaker, as you probably heard. Uh, straight brackets, these uh, 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 indicate included and a round bracket or parentheses. Uh, means excluded. So this means excluding the upper bound and this means excluding the lower bound. And this is simply going to add uh, the text around that and that's basically it. Now if you want um, you can actually then calculate the frequencies for each. So for example here and then you can simply use count ifs uh, and select the entire range and if it's greater than or equal to and then my lower bound and it must be uh, less than my upper bound or similarly for if you have the upper bound included you count in column A uh, if it's greater than my lower bound and uh, the same range again if it's less than or equal to and then my uh, upper bound now if you want you can actually also use the frequency array function for this uh, so what you do there is you select an entire range. I can actually delete this and show you. So first select the entire range, then say equals uh, frequency. And it asks you for where is the data. Well, that's column A. And my bins array is then those upper bounds. Um, 
and those are up here uh, sorry the lower bounds I think control shift enter and then it enters all of them oh that should have been the upper bounds control shift enter and as you can see they exactly match if you want you can also assign each data point to its corresponding uh, bin so that's what I'm doing over here. Um, this is uh, index that will actually um, yeah, uh, create some kind of array. In this case, uh, the G34, so my lower bounds, these, and then it's going to have to find which one of those bins the number actually falls into. And it's doing that by matching and then match uh, the value in and then the range that are my lower bounds for that one and then simply one so that it's doing a range lookup and that will give you then every time the correct um, bin same thing here uh, but then we do need to check if it might be uh, not giving an error because if it gives an error then it's simply the first category um, and otherwise uh, it's the category it can actually find so that's why this one is slightly longer as you can see but it does work I'll leave a link to this uh, Excel file in my uh, on my website and a link to the website can be found in the description below all right I hope this was helpful uh, I think I covered everything and um, if you are interested in on deciding on the number of bins that's also an entirely different video uh, okay, thank you for watching and hope it was helpful.